Hey y'all, so today I'm going to talk about Boeing 737 MAX uh, issues with it and HVAC's analysis for it. So the origin of it, um, so Boeing's rival Airbus created a new model that was basically just a bigger engine that was better at fuel cons consumption and it seamlessly fell into their plane. So Boeing needing to, you know, match this upgrade so that they could be competitive in the market um, tried to fit the same engine on their plane, but they couldn't because their model was way closer to the ground than Airbus. So they had to re-engineer their engine to fit on their plane. So basically what they did is they raised it up higher on the wing. Um, that was their solution. So when they were doing testing with that, they realized that because of the um, just weight distribution and uh, certain air friction stuff with the way the engine was now, that it caused the knows the plane to ascend too high and if you know planes if it sends too high you can stall so they had to create something to combat the nose of the plane ascending so high so they created this system the mcas system the maneuvering characteristics augmentation system mm -hmm. so they developed this in response to the nose uh ascending too high as i said basically just composed of a sensor that gets data from oncoming airflow and the angle at which it's coming at and if it detects that the um, angle is too high it pushes the nose down and pushes the tail up um, so this is obviously a big change in technology, but Boeing wanting this to be a seamless upgrade, um, just like the Air, the new Airbus uh, A320 Neo um, was, they decided to kind of like not mention this system very much and not really introduce a lot of training or publication on it because they wanted it to be like, hey, we just added a new engine, uh, it's a seamless upgrade, that's it. Um, so then two different times in uh, October 2018 and March 2019 um, two 737 maxes crashed um, very early on their takeoffs um, 188 people killed in Indonesia 157 people killed in Ethiopia obviously there's a lot of problems and those are two big deals um, but the main problem was the MCAS system but there's a lot of systemic problems that went along with that um, if you can see in this air flight diagram uh, basically what happened was on takeoff something with the sensor in both planes was messing up and it caused the nose of the plane to keep diving down um, and when you're not up in the air at a safe altitude that can really mess up things so it caused the nose to keep diving and eventually they plunged straight into the ground or to the ocean and crashed and killed everybody um, so now we're going to go into the analysis of this with the swiss cheese model and also uh, hvacs so the unsafe accident is I kind of defined as the pilot and the crew errors. So a decision error that I noticed is that in the Indonesian Flight 610, um, the pilot gave the office, first officer the responsibility of um, finding the problem and figuring out how to override MCAS and stuff like that. Um, but he actually, in further investigations, was found that he failed his training um, and was not properly trained. So he really didn't know what to do, so they couldn't figure anything out. Um, the routine violation is also in Flight 610. Um, the crew from the previous day, they did not report their cockpit and plane issues thoroughly enough. So um, if they, in further investigations, if they had reported correctly and thoroughly what was actually wrong with the plane, they would have grounded it and not used it for the flight the next day. Um, in the next level, the preconditions for unsafe acts, um, obviously the big ones, technology, the MCAS sensors, um, receiving incorrect data, not being calibrated, um, just the system was not ready um, or was not developed enough. And then for communication problems, the same thing I said earlier, if the crew not being able to report that to um, the thorough thoroughness to, about the cockpit issues to the next day uh, caused the plane to take off when it shouldn't have. Um, the next level is supervisory factors, so inadequate supervision. Um, so because they wanted their upgrade to the new engine and the new model to be seamless, they really tried not to emphasize the MCAS system or anything, so they really didn't um, give much training or publication or anything to the new system or the changes. They just kind of advertised it as a new plane with you know, no downsides, nothing new, just a better fuel consumption plane. Um, obviously they didn't train their pilots or their crew enough and that was a key problem and why this is these crashes happened so failure to correct the known problem so in later investigations there are pilots during a development phase that knew 
that there was a problem with the nose dive and they kept reporting it to the FAA, which is the um, airline regulatory system, basically. And they didn't reopen the case on looking at the new MCAS technology and that was a problem with the regulatory body. So then the supervisory violation, um, again, with back to the FAA, their job is to do stuff like this, to regulate training and mandate manuals and training and look at technology and make sure everything's safe and update and good. And they didn't do that. And they didn't do that enough, at least. And that obviously led to slack on training and things like that. Um, the regulatory body, that's their job to do that. And organizational influences for culture, I, I basically just said that um, due to competitiveness and they needed financial gain and they tried to create a product so hastily they bypassed safety and training and they tried to brush the new stuff like the MCAS system to the side and sweep it under the rug because they didn't want to advertise that there was a lot of new things going on, that it was just a seamless upgrade for the new plane. And then for the operational process, uh, research and development bypassed many safety departments and codes in order to make the plane as fast as possible and get it out into the world. So for corrective actions, um, I just said much more thorough testing and situational understanding of the MCAS system by Boeing and the FAA. The FAA needs to be better at regulating um, and be more supervising. Um, Boeing needs to emphasize safety over you know, corporate greed and financial gain. Um, there needs to be way more training for the pilots and the crew on the whole system, including MCAS. Um, needs to be better manuals and the display for the MCAS needed to be better because in both plane crashes, the pilots didn't had no idea what was going on. If there was a salient display that was easy to read, was legible for the pilots, they would have seen that the data that the sensor was getting was too much and that was they could focus on that as the problem at least. So these are my references. Appreciate y'all watching.